Harmonic response analysis analysis mechanical. So it is available in Workbench as all the major uh, analysis types. So you simply have to drag and drop with harmonic response into the project schematic. For harmonic response, this uh, this analysis method, well, you basically get the gist of it by thinking about shaking a structure and evaluating its response. And the input shaking you, you put in it is sinusoidal. So where could we use this? Well, you actually have a two examples in nature that end up affecting structures. Uh, and this can be used to, and this can be used to uh, help improve designs or find out where uh, possible where possible stress concentrations may form. So what we see here is one such example is ocean waves. If ocean waves incident on an offshore structure, like say this wind turbine, would it definitely need to be accounted for when designing such a structure. And as for wind loads as well. That would be very important if you're trying to design an aircraft, like particularly the wings. It would be very good to know how those would behave subject to these sinusoidal load conditions. It's also applicable to large civil structures. And as you can see here on the bottom center, we actually have an image of the rather infamous now Tacoma Narrows Bridge, which has, well, I, I guess after several civil engineering forensic studies on that, they have determined that, well, it was very likely the wind loading that was causing such large deformations and led to its unfortunate collapse a mere few months after it had finished construction. So, I mean, we, we as engineers, we hate to have that happen to our, our work, you know, especially because we may have spent many years on it at that point, but that's why we have ANSYS in our corner to help us better our designs overall. And one thing that uh, I guess that's definitely important when we're starting any new analysis is to get an idea of what the underlying assumptions are for the analysis type in in harmonic response, there are no non-linearities. So that is going to limit the material selection for one. So unfortunately, we won't be able to use, say, plasticity models or hyperelastic models. And as well, we will have to exclude frictional contacts as well. Uh, and another thing is this initial transient effects are going to be ignored. And you can just sort of think of it this way. Okay, you take, an, you take a structure and let's say you shake it. And after a really long time, you will see that the response has is sinusoidal, yeah, uh, the response of your structure is sinusoidal, similar to this blue curve. And its frequency is going to be the same as the frequency you're driving it at. And, but that's only, of course, after a long time. Initially, you might have something like this red curve where there's some spurious 
transient results that eventually they will wane away over time due to damping. So for ANSYS, they're, they're not as much concerned with these initial transient results. You will be getting results based on the amplitude of the steady state. And, th and that's what you will be seeing whenever you perform such an analysis. If you look under the hood as to what ANSYS is doing, it's, well, it's trying to solve Newton's law in this form. And after doing some uh, matrix manipulations and after guessing a complex exponential type of solution, you eventually arrive at something that looks like a force vector is a stiffness matrix times a displacement vector. Now, looking at the theory behind the synensis help, they will tell you that this is the exact same equation that's actually being solved in static structural, except for the fact that these three terms, they're all functions of frequency. So what you're in effect doing is you're solving the exact same uh, equation only for multiple times, once for each frequency. For harmonic response, you actually have two methods with which to proceed. You can do the full method or the modal superposition method. The full method is, well, the, these terms in the matrix equation, they do have, um, they have as many terms as you have degrees of freedom in your matrix. So it, you have to have a very fine mesh, lots of nodes. This might take a very long time to solve. For the modal superposition method, it's uh, the, the dimension of this matrix and vectors is going to be dependent on how many modes you keep. And sometimes you can get away with only a few modes and you get say 90% of the result, which is good. You, we want simulations that run fast. And so I've prepared this one model here. It's just a beam fixed at both ends. And I wanted to see the modes that are associated with this. You see the first mode is maybe one half sine. The second mode is a full sine wave. Third mode is three halves of a sine and so on and so forth. And this, this has to do with, well, it is a frequency based Oh, frequency domain based analysis and the the method that that's typically used for this is well it's also known as Fourier Fourier type of analysis which yeah tends to break down every signal into a linear combination of signs or signs and cosines depending on boundary conditions and so but at least the modes do make sense. And one of the interesting things that you can get from this uh, harmonic response is the frequency response uh, function, which, yes, you could insert that into the left-hand side of your workbench model. In this case, I have chosen acceleration. And this is the frequency response as a result of uh, an input signal, which is just a one meter per second uh, loading on my beam structure. And what we see here, we have resonance at 51.6 hertz, as well as 200 and 66 hertz, which, okay, yeah, that, that matches what we have here. That's good. And note here that 
I, I did want to include just to let everybody know that this is this can be thought of as a transmissibility factor in the sense that that's defined as the output divided by the input. But the input here is just unitary. So what we see here is that you have a transmission of 17 times the input signal at this uh, at 51.6 hertz, as well as about four, the transmissibility of four at about 266 hertz. We can also obtain the stresses that are that are associated with such resonances. Again, you would insert that into your solution and input your frequency as well as phase to obtain such graphs. Now, I, I think I may have gone over time, so thank you, Pat, for being patient with me. But uh, I'm going to turn it back over to you so you can talk about response spectrum. Thank you.